check this space out. Shapes within shapes, multiple paths, multiple elevation changes, curves, bends, twists, etc. There is a lot of irregular and complex shaped square footage here to measure and it's just little old me to do it. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to show you how I measure it in super quick time. And to show you how, this device here, Mosier, can capture multiple shapes, shapes within the shapes, while it's giving me all the numbers in three dimensions and it draws it all out as I go along. To get the ball rolling, let's measure this picnic area, if you can see that behind me. I've activated Mosier already by rotating it 180 degrees and back again, launched the Mosier Pro app. Within moments, the device and my app has connected via Bluetooth. To kick us off, let's press the plus symbol and I can choose a measurement type to suit the shape or area that we want to measure. We have a choice of closed shape, open shape, point to point and angle. I'm going to choose, let's see, let's choose closed shape because I want to get the total area and perimeter of this whole space. Right, we're up and running, all systems are go. Looking on the app, we have a red light and it is telling me to go to our start point, which I am here now, so let's do that. We wait a moment, the light goes from red to green, which means we are good to go, we can start measuring. Right, so I've captured my first point and you'll notice that it is a straight line measurement because by default the path type Mosier is chosen is for a straight line measurement. You'll notice also that as the points are captured, the drawing appears on the screen with the associated measurement. As we approach the curved section of this area, we can switch our path type, mid measurement from straight line to another type. There are multiple path types to choose from like straight line, ignore line, trace, arc, circle, wall, etc. I will choose arc. You only need three points for arc. I have one. Let's get a second. There we go. On the third point, see what happens. We get a lovely defined arc and plot it with the numbers alongside. So let's continue switching path types as they go along. I'm going to move fast and deliberately and place motion down every six to eight seconds. I pause for a moment and let motion capture the point. I move fast between points in order to maximize the measurement accuracy. And off I go again to the next point. I'm not, you know, driving Miss Daisy back home on a lazy Sunday afternoon, nor am I like Schumacher in a Ferrari, but maybe somewhere in between. I can travel about 40 foot in six to eight seconds over normal ground. And when I place it down, it is worth taking the care, easing the brakes gently to place the device and not coming to a screeching halt or a hard stop and crash land the device. Like any electronic instrument, you may overwhelm the gyros and affect your measurement if I touch down with a bang. I also like to let the stick rest between my thumb and my index finger, if you can see that, which ensures there's no movement while Mojo does its thing. At this point, I can be continually assessing the terrain and decide my next move. And the thing is, right, we are ahead. We are measuring faster and smarter already. We have not had to divide this space up into sections or draw it all out in grids and do the math. We know how long that takes, but Motion is doing all the number crunching for us, so it is worth just taking that extra moment to place the device down with extra care and get a good measurement. If you have placed it down too hard, the app is going to let you know. So right, as we arrive back to our start finish point, I want to ensure that I land gently on the same point to maximize the accuracy of the measurement. So looking at this now, we can see the total area and the total perimeter. This is just the base layer and only part of this park's landscape. I can actually name that layer later. I would also like to know the measurements for the raised bed sections just there behind me at each level and the grassed area that envelops this particular area 
Also, I'd like to show you how we can capture these trees just down there behind me while switching path types between circle and ignore line. That's going to be fun. To kick us off, I will add another layer. So I tap layers, tap add a new layer to begin the next part of this measurement. Layers is another feature that will allow me to measure these different shapes within this overall area. To ensure that all these layers are positioned relative to each other, I need to capture two reference points along my first edge. Ideally, these points must be approximately 14 to 15 feet or 13 to 15 feet apart or 4 to 5 meters. Now Moj is orientated correctly and it knows where it is in this landscaped urban park. So let's make our way to the start of the shape that I actually want to measure. The path type is set to ignore line by default when you start a layer. So I need to switch to whatever path type I want to use next, which in this case is going to be straight line. And away we go. As I move along with my measurement, I can switch to different path types to suit the space in front of me. And I just repeat the process similar to what I did on the base layer measurement. Remembering to land gently, this area is now completed. I will tap the start finish measurement at the bottom center. And on screen I can see the total area and I can see the total perimeter of this particular sub layer. This whole raised area shape with all of its straight lines and arcs is orientated and dovetailed onto our original base layer. I will give it a name later. And while I'm here, I've added a new layer just so I can capture this tree in the middle because I want to show you another path type. Like I mentioned, Mosier by default puts the path type into ignore line, but once you, when you add a new layer, this means that it will not appear on your diagram. When I reach the area that I want to measure, in this case, the tree, I can choose a suitable path type for this measurement. So let's choose circle. We need three points for circle to work. The more, the better. So I've got one, this is two, three. And now if you look here, we have a circle which symbolizes this tree. It is overlaid and positioned correctly within the whole diagram because it shares points along the first, the base layer's first edge, which is the same for all the layers in this whole measurement. Now I want to capture this vast grassed area that envelopes this raised picnic area. So I have tapped layers, I've added a new layer, I've got my two reference points along my first edge which were approximately four to five meters or 13 to 15 feet apart and when I get to the start of the area that I want to measure I switch over to a suitable path type. It's just myself so there's no need for a second person. Even though there are a lot of elevation changes, twists and turns, Mosier will take it all in, in its stride. As I move along with my measurements, I am switching different path types to suit the space in front of me. I am switching from arc and also trace, where the shape is more irregular and complex. So for example, as I trace out this slightly meandering section that is neither straight nor arced, every step of every curve of every swerve is being recorded and drawn out. Historically, with a space like this, I would have divided it into grids and used a tape and then do the math. And I know for a fact that when I do that for myself, I'm introducing error into that scenario, more or less, and never can tell. The fact is Moja's doing these mathematical gymnastics for me is giving me peace of mind and also giving me a more accurate estimate. Added to that, I'm not only twisting and turning on this path, but there's a lot of fall and rise which has been captured and drawn out in the Moja app. I will show you this once I've completed the whole measurement. The surface is fairly even, 
and again as I place the mulch stick down I am doing so with care I am not being heavy handed about it or holding it either like a grip I don't grip it tight and swing it like a viking I hold the stick like so with my fingers and this prevents it from swinging as I walk and when I place it down I'm not trying to break the earth as if I'm wielding Thor's hammer I place it gently and let the stick rest between my thumb and my index finger this way I know that for a motion based measuring device or tool that is Mosier it is still and therefore it can capture a point I can take a breath and assess my next move okay I've completed that measurement I've got my total area and all the calculations so moving on now to that group of trees right there behind me which way are they? They're just there so we add a new layer and by default a new layer sets the path type up in ignore line we have our line on our diagram indicating the first edge that we measured way back at the start of the process just in case I couldn't remember we need to capture two reference points along this reference line roughly four to five meters or 13 to 15 foot apart so that this new area will overlay and be orientated relative to this whole area we've already measured so we're heading down now to the trees and on my arrival and my first measuring point I can switch from ignore line to circle which I've just done and I need to capture at least three points for a circle but the more you get the more accurate the measurement so we have one and there's two and then three we have a circle which I will use to denote a tree so I could go back to my first edge to begin a new layer in order to capture this next tree but what I'm going to do instead is just leave the measurement live tap ignore line and make my way over to the next tree the ignore line measurement does not appear on the diagram so now I shall switch back to circle to capture this tree and repeat the process for each subsequent tree we are done in little to no time at all despite the fact that the weather today has been changeable dancing in between raindrops one second and the sun the next but for all these areas we have the total area and the total perimeter the base layer and each sub layer has its own numbers we are looking at this whole urban landscape and plan view so let's have a cheeky look at it all in 3D I can move the diagram around to get a feel for this whole urban landscape and see elements that I can see immediately just looking at it normally I can see the elevation difference anywhere I choose if I select a point the coordinates x, y and z are displayed or z of course which refers to the elevation difference relative to where our start point was let's select our cross section tool to dive in deeper I can select this point here and that point and get the length, the rise and fall or I can check out the gradient on this section of the path I can go to the gradient, there's my grade, my angle etc all my numbers let's come out of there and I can go into layers and name them accordingly everything is named and it's all nice and organized if I want it also as well I can label specific measurements it's another cool feature which at the moment not many may be aware of it's called labels I can go back into the app let's select a point here on the picnic area and select edit select edit label and type in picnic area I can select a point on the circle and type in tree actually it looks more like a lonely tree so let's call it that lonely tree I can repeat this for the whole area and how long did I take to get to this point let me see nearly 18,000 square foot plus all the other areas and how many minutes later time is on the screen somewhere I'm all done here I can email this drawing off to myself or a client or whoever it may concern we have multiple file types DXF for 3D applications like SketchUp Pro AutoCAD 
other file types like PDF, SVG, CSV, CSV++. So we know we can print it off. It will land nicely into the workflow of other software programs like Dynascape, Vectorworks, ArcSight, all of this. And there is more, more than I can show you today anyway, all bundled into this tough little black box called Mosier. Using layers and multiple pads has allowed us to capture multiple shapes with different path types. And we can see this in relation to each other thanks to our very first reference line right behind me. All of that from a device I pulled out of my pocket.